If you're one of those people who looks at exercise as just about the last thing you want to do in a day, or even once a week, you are not alone. I mean, you can't just decide to like exercising and all of a sudden just feel all glowy inside at the thought of a good workout. So that's where mindset coach Lisa Thruston comes in. She understands that you can't just tell yourself you love burpees or planks and then expect a flood of happiness to follow. Our brains are pretty smart little devils and they need more than that to get the joy flowing. Lisa's here to tell us what we need to really find the joy in movement. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. When it comes to finding joy in movement, what role does our mindset play in that? Our mindset is, has a huge role in it. It's actually the first muscle, quote unquote, we need to get on board to actually start to build a habit and a practice of moving our bodies. Would you say that a lot of times it's the challenge of getting yourself to work out that's hard, but then afterward you do feel a lot better? Well, you know, there is all that scientific evidence that it releases endorphins and you feel better after having do, done it, but sometimes it is about getting all of us on board to actually do the thing. <laughs> what is the first step then for getting in that right mindset? I think first and foremost is to expand your definition of what a workout is. Because most of us think, well, we have to go to the gym, we have to do a class, we have to do X, Y, or Z. But if we start to expand a workout to include so many more other things, then it, we can find the fun and the joy in moving our bodies. So what are some of those other things that you would use as an example? Well, I think walking gets a bad rap. It's a great way to get out there and enjoy like our beautiful trails and our beautiful pathways. Um, getting on the bike, buying some roller skates, uh, playing basketball. There's a whole variety of what did you like to do when you were a kid? That's what I like to ask people because sometimes that's that first click into being like, oh, it can be more than just lifting weights. <laughs> so getting curious. Absolutely. And I know you mentioned going outside, but if you do have a dog or something, I mean, a lot of times we walk our dog, so that can be counted as our workout. Absolutely. Or at work, have a walking meeting. You're kind of killing two birds with one stone there. <laughs> oh, walking meeting. Oh, our executive producer is listening right now. I think we should have a walking meeting today for our segment ideas. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about how we can get into this then and you know, put that into action. So I think first and foremost, it's important to have an action plan. So whether that's how many days a week you want to do that, what activities are we going to try? Are you going to have an accountability buddy? Those are all things that you can start to put into place. So it's less likely that you're not going to follow through on what you want to do. So when it comes to putting this plan together, do you recommend writing down each day what you plan to do? Or can that be kind of mentally draining as well? You know, I think it depends on what kind of learner you are. If you need to see that visual representation, then by all means, it needs to go in that Google Cal, that iCal, whatever it is. Maybe it's on the uh, sticky board, whatever you need to see that to make sure you don't cancel on yourself. So writing it down is a good thing then. How it can be. far in advance should you be making this action plan? I think in the beginnings, try a week at a time. See how that first week goes. See what you want to tweak. See what needs to shift, what you want to change. If we go too far in advance, then sometimes it can start to feel overwhelming and you can start to look like, oh, this is what I have to do in three weeks. No, let's just focus a day at a time. A couple of points we're looking at too right now, like the online classes. Why yes. can that be beneficial for people? Especially if you're new to working out and you feel uncomfortable in a big group setting, online classes let you do movement from the privacy and the safety and the comfort of your own home. Do you think it's harder to get in the mindset for wanting to work out though if you're just at your own home and you don't have the motivation or the people around you? I think it definitely provides its own set of challenges, but that's a great way. There are so many classes that are kind of interactive that you, it's not just necessarily a YouTube video, but that would be a great way saying, hey, I'm checking in with my best friend. We're both going to do this online class. That way you kind of keep yourself accountable and keep yourself moving. And then bringing your sneakers to work to use over breaks, like you mentioned yes. also, you could do walking meetings, but that kind of sparks this thought in my had too about just even in general having your gym bag packed to go right after work instead of going home why is it good to plan ahead in that way and have your stuff ready? Well, I think if you wanted to work out in the morning, it's a great idea to have everything, like your gym bag packed, your outfit laid out, so that when you wake up, that alarm goes off at 5 a.m. You don't have the excuse of, now I have to gather everything. It's just roll out of bed and go. Or after work, it's just roll right to the gym and do your thing, because it gives you less wiggle room to kind of talk yourself out of it. 
I'll be the first to admit when I get home after work, if I don't bring my stuff with, I don't go. Exactly. Because yes. once I get home, I'm like, <laughs> I'm just, I, I think, have no motivation to I go. I think that's the majority of people, yes. <laughs> so another point of this too is, you know, giving yourself grace, practicing kindness. What are some things we can do to do that? Well, I think it comes from both ends of the spectrum. If you're new to working out, it's giving yourself the ability to get used to working out to kind of uh, navigate muscle soreness, some new fatigue. If you're changing your definition, if you're already pretty consistent at working out, it's giving yourself the ability to de define a workout in a different aspect than maybe you're used to. And what are some questions we can ask ourselves after the workout to know if this is something that really does bring us joy? Did I have fun? Would I do it again? Am I excited to tell people that this is something I'm exploring? If you can't help but want to share it with everybody, I think that's a pretty good sign that this might be something you can stick with. A lot of times, too, when we try a workout or maybe working out part of our body that we don't a lot, it's easy to get really sore and feel uncomfortable afterward. So when it comes to picking out what you're going to do for your workout, why is it important to, you know, take it easy, start simple? I think it's important to like vet the people who you're taking classes from and see if they provide a variety of options, some modifications for every different level. And sometimes it's about the permission to listen to your body. So you may be seeing something in a class that is a more advanced level, but only taking it at a speed and at a pace that you feel safe and comfortable doing and giving yourself rest days. It's okay to let your body rest and recover. Does multitasking during your workout help too? Say if you're going for a walk outside, listening to like your favorite podcast, or if, if it's winter, which we have, you know, a lot of months of bad weather, if you're watching like Netflix while you're walking on the treadmill, does that help make the time go by faster and make you feel joy? I think it can. I know there are certain people who save a book on tape only for their workout so they get excited to see what the next chapter is going to be or saving that favorite show the next episode for the next time you're on the treadmill or on the bike or whatever it is and i think that can be that incentive that kind of wants makes you want to go and work out again lots of great tips thank you so much lisa for thank joining you. me here today and helping us learn to find joy in our workouts thank you for having me